What I'm gonna show you next is a Node Plus 4 Cascade. And what we've built is an actual HFC light network. We've emulated everything all the way to the end of the line. The Vespa node is supporting a DOCSIS 4.0 remote Mac Fi device. It supports 1.8 on the RF. It supports different types of splits. It has a pluggable diplex filter, so an operator, if they choose to select a different split, they will have the ability to do that. What we've done for this demonstration is we've selected a 684 upstream and a 1794 downstream. Now the amplifiers are drop-in modules, and what a drop-in module is, it's a module that can go into a housing that we already have out there. From the amplifier, we fed four different taps. We have a tap down here, and then we have taps up here, and this is our end of line tap. Again, there is cable simulating what the distances would be out in the street in between the taps. Here on the analyzer, we have five OFDM blocks in the downstream. So on the far left side, you're gonna see uh, the first OFDM block start at 834 megahertz, and it goes all the way up to 1794 megahertz. Each one of these OFDM blocks are running 4K QAM, and this is a real speed test server. So this is what a customer would actually see in production. This is running at 8.9 gigabits down, 6.16, 6.12 gigabits on the upstream. And this is bi-directionally, simultaneously, all going down to this cable modem. And that's some great capacity. We have some very interesting 10G demonstrations to share with you today. We're actually feeding three of these demonstrations from a production virtual CMTS in our office south of Denver, 80 kilometers away by fiber. That's important because what we're showing you is very close to a production configuration of how some of this 10G technology would work. On the first demonstration, we have the first ever FDX full duplex RPD node from our partners at Harmonic. What we've seen in our demonstrations and what we're showing here today is speeds that achieve up to 8, 8.5 gigabits per second in the downstream and up to 5 gigabits per second in the upstream. In the second demonstration, we're also using 10G FDX technology, but we're actually deploying the FDX bandwidth across two modems. As you can see in the diagram, we've allocated some of the FDX spectrum to one modem and another portion of the FDX spectrum to another modem. They're used in a complementary fashion such that one modem has two downstream and one upstream, and the other has one downstream and two upstream, and in the non-FDX band, they share that spectrum. In this case, what we're showing is the same amount of FDX bandwidth that we saw, or FDX capacity that we saw in demonstration one. What's different here is it's being shared amongst the two modems, as you can see in the bottom dials on the diagram, and both the upstream and downstream are on at the same time in the FDX band for the entire FDX bandwidth. So in this demonstration, we're delivering two gigabit downstream and one gigabit upstream to a modem provisioned for those services, the XB8 modem shown here on this table. This is a service available today over DOCSIS 3.1 technology, which is widely deployed in our, in our systems today. The 10G technology that we saw in the first demonstration could also be part of this node implementation instead of the DOCSIS 3.1 implementation. In that case, you would have a 10 gigabit EPON last mile adjacent to a 10 gigabit RPD module, so we could do multi-gigabit symmetric speeds to both DOCSIS customers and Fiber to the Home customers out of the same node the same node hardware, and the same back-end software. We have built a platform now that goes in with every DAA installation that monitors all of our fiber connectivity of that, from that installation into the field 24-7. It allows us to recognize when there's fiber cuts and act on them immediately. As you can see, we have a, a solid fiber link, and we're going to ask Simone to go ahead and pull one of the fibers. They can see now that the fiber cut has happened very nearby. Simone is going to reconnect the fiber. This application exists in the cloud. Anyone with access to this application can see the remediation in place. As you can see, the service was restored. The Comcast build out of DAA and the build out of the path to 10G is going to take advantage of the technologies that we're using to increase our bandwidth and increase our speeds, but also to make the network smarter, more robust, more resilient, and more highly available.